Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is episode 41. Today we're diving into John chapter 19, verses 1 through 16. Today we have Brother Josh and Brother John in the building here to discuss the way, share an opinion, our thoughts, iron to be able to sharpen iron. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me. We'll be led today by Brother Josh and then the closing prayer will be done by Brother John. If you guys can, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made. I rejoice and be in it, God. I pray that you continue to be with us as now, God. As now as we come together as brothers to discuss your word, God. I am to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that we'll have an understanding of this verse today, God, through you, God. To be able to share the opinion, ask the question, share the thoughts, to be able to continue to understand your word, God. We praise you, we love you, and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, starting off with verse one, um, then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I'm going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, look, here is the man. So I think kind of just piggybacking off of the Bible study we did last week, because um, we were we were talking about Pilate and how basically in chapter 18, the conversation he was having with Jesus, um, how he was inquiring about who Jesus was, he was asking like, so you are a king, what is the truth, stuff like that. Um, we were kind of coming to the conclusion that he was having a change of heart whether Jesus is guilty or not, and verse, what is it, verse four just confirmed that, that after that personal talk and intimate moment he had with the Lord, um, he realized that he wasn't guilty and he wasn't really comfortable uh, being the one to punish him, so I think that's why he said, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty, um, so that's what I kind of have to throw in there from verses one to five. I have a question for the seasonal, uh, in verses one, uh, I said, why did Plainer had Jesus flog flogged, flogged, I believe that's how you pronounce the word, with a lead whip um, if he believed that Jesus was innocent? And also, what does flog mean? Because I was so confused by that. All right, cool. That can help. So flogged um, actually is, is hit in essence. Um, so what they used back then, uh, it was like, I guess I'm going to use my hand. It's like um, a tool that was like a, a stick, and on the end it had different, I'm going to call it fingers, and it had lead tips. And so what mm. the purpose was, as you will be hit with it, um, it wasn't like you just got hit, but it had like little hooks on the end. So it literally got like hooked into your skin, and they ripped it back. And so, you know, mm. when they talked about Jesus being whipped and flogged, and, you know, the stripes on his back, it literally is, as he got hit, his back and his body were just getting bruised by the flog. Uh, that's what they had for that. Um, as far as why he got flogged, I, I'm not going for it. It's hard for me, I guess, in 2021 to read the scripture and not just say this happened just by the mere, mere politics. Um, yeah. Like the word says, like Pilate found Jesus innocent. Uh, but in this particular case, the people, the people wanted vengeance. They wanted this man to be punished because he said he is a king. Um, and of course, we see here he's being mocked. He's being beat, torn, all these different things, put a roar, a, a, a robe on them, uh, which signifies, especially with purple, signifying royalty. And they're saying, oh, this is your, this is the king of the Jews. Here you go. This is your king. I find them innocent, but here you go, because you want me to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And, and I mean, I don't know. Like I said, the nature of today, cultural time, having me look at the scripture kind of like, you should have stood up. But it would all goes with a purpose uh, with it. But that's really what it is when I read that today, at least. Um, he, he did what he was, he was elected to do, he, what he was in place to do. He wanted to make the people happy, um, mm. despite the realization that Jesus was who he said he was. All right. Um, if you guys have nothing else to add, I'll go on to verses 6 through 10. Verse 6 says, when they saw him, the leading priests and temple guards began shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, by our law, he ought to die because he called himself the son of God. 
When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? And that was the end of verse 10. Any thoughts there? I did have a question about verse 6, but I have to do with politics. Uh, I got, I kind of got the answer from it from the first question that I asked for John. But in the, but my third question is for verse 7. Um, so was it like a law back then that if you call yourself the son of man, you'll be punished? Because uh, in verse 7, I feel like they were hinting towards that. Remember, it's it's um it's blasphemous to even say the name of the Lord in vain. And so, mm. you know, you have Jesus come on the scene here saying he's the son of God and that the father has sent him. Um, it, it riled them up. Um, even what we see here between the last couple of chapters and even here in this particular one, these people were upset. They're mm-hmm. upset. Forget the fact this man is turning water into wine. Forget the fact this man is teaching in synagogues as a child. Forget the fact that this man is doing all these wonderful miracles and the message that he brings. Just for the fact that he is saying he is the son of God, these people are ready to have a fit. They don't care. They don't care if, if Pilate found him innocent. I don't care. Crucify him. He said he is the son of God. And remember... <laughs> Back then, uh, the, the rule of the time was you go by the rule of the book. So to come and actually the usurp culture, um, it was a big crime. And, oh, yeah. Well, I haven't been on YouTube enough times now, so I can get kicked off now. Um, I, I, the thing that scares me as I read this is sometimes I feel like we, we do this now in our church culture as Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, we get so caught up in what the letter of our tradition is. I'm not even saying this letter of the word, but we're caught up in the letter of our tradition, the way that we, we know our ancestors did it, our elders did it, not realizing. If you look at Jesus in his life, remember, Jesus was without sin. Jesus was a righteous man. Jesus walked the honor before the Lord and God's people. But because he didn't walk in the way that people felt that he should, and he said something that wasn't necessarily popular. Uh, it was ready to just knock him down. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. And sometimes we got to be real careful uh, with, with following the culture of what we know, the tradition of what we know, rather than following the spirit of God. Granted, overall, remember, in all things pertaining to the word, everything is by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. These things had to happen. It had to happen this way. Um, but... It goes with it. Um, but I, I still go back to touching the politics of the day. It says, um, verse 6, the Bible says, Take them yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find them not guilty. And sometimes we just get that. He's openly proclaimed he's not guilty. What you say this man has done is a crime. He is not guilty. And even, um, it's funny, my Pentecostal almost kicked in when, when Joshua was reading verse uh, 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. He was talking about, you know, um, I when he was saying in verse nine, he took Jesus to the back headquarters again and asked him, where are you from? And Jesus gave an answer. And then he goes to ask, why don't you talk to me? And Pilate demanded, don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? And of mm-hmm. course, you know, in the back of my Holy Ghost filled mind, I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, he do not. Uh, you have <laughs> earthly power. I'm like, but uh, at the next part, we can go, oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but even with and the funny thing is too character wise look at Jesus in the midst of all these things just quiet when you, right when you compare the gospels and even the prophecies in the old testament he is just quiet it's like the Lord is just saying you know what do what you gonna do um, I gotta you might, oh man y'all might remember this from uh, I don't know if it was a year a couple years ago it was a guy in the hotel and the customer was upset and all the guys said after a while was just, it's above me now. Yes. It's yes. Above me now. And it's like, through all this time, it's like the Lord is saying, this is above me now. I mean, I don't need to respond. I don't, I don't need to say anything. This, this is above me. It's above me. I like that. I like that. It's above me now. That's going to be, that's, that's the, that's the motto. <laughs> oh, man. No, but Ezra, do you have any I'm gonna other start, thoughts? I'm, I'm going to start going out with life. It's above me. It's above, me, I come to it, it's above me. It's above me. Above the Lord, it's above me. <laughs> but I always uh, like to point out 
um, that people easily turn on you. And we see it in the scriptures. Uh, I, I said this last week. People are like leaves. Wherever the wind blow, they blow. Basically, like whatever idea came, comes, they're going to support it, whether it's going against you or not, or just, just anything. So always got to be careful who you have around you. It's true, though. Like our, yeah, go ahead, Jasper. I was just saying one thing I, I find interesting, because we had also touched on last week, Brother Nathan was here, and he was kind of giving us um, just the history side of things as well, um, and kind of how politics plays a part in this. I just find it so mind-boggling that, you know, after Pilate has this experience with Jesus, because like we saw the whole conversation, how he was questioning, and now he's openly proclaiming that he's not guilty. It's just, it's surprising to me that he was even willing to turn him back over to the people. I'm just, I kind of try to put myself in that conversation and I'm, I'm understanding like he has this political position and he does have his duty to the people, but I'm like, but this is Jesus, you know? Like, I don't, I don't understand how someone could have that close of an experience with him and still be willing to allow this to happen to him. But obviously it was, much bigger than the both of them. Um, it was heavenly ordained, for lack of a better term, uh, and it had to happen. But it was just a thought that I had. Um, but if you guys don't have any other thoughts uh, regarding verses 6 to 10, I can move on. Well, I actually got something to throw with what you're saying uh, just now, actually. Awesome. Um, because you got to remember, I mean, there's, there's a big difference from being in the presence of the Lord and having an encounter with the Lord. I mean... <laughs> Uh, even for a, a sack of stick of pilot, he had a conversation with the Lord, but what was the impact of that conversation on him? It had enough mm-hmm. impact for him to realize this man is innocent, um, but it, it wasn't even to the place that he was able to say, I've had the experience and encounter with Christ to the point that I can tell you as a political leader, this man does not deserve to die and you need to turn mm-hmm. his ways. Um, and even, like I said, for him, even though he talked with the Lord, his desire was stronger than what that encounter had. It was mm-hmm. more concerned about, well, I have my office here. I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm not going to judge him. You crucify him. You take care of it. Rather than proclaiming the actual truth of being, this mm-hmm. man is right. This man does not deserve to die. Do mm-hmm. not kill him. So it's, it's just, I mean, think of it, even for us, I always have to bring it to... Not just the words say, but how can we apply it day to day? How many times have it been, you know, we might have had an, an experience speaking with God or hearing with God, but it didn't relate to our application. So it kind of makes it full circle. It's not just encountering God, but it's being able to imply what you got from that encounter. Okay. I would just say, you know, I, I encountered you, you know, good conversation, uh, good talking to you, but um, I'm not going to apply that pressure towards it in my own my, my, my life in full at least as far as politically so we, we're gonna sure. keep that in mind too so we can we can hear god and i'll put us on the cutting room floor how many times have we heard god say a b c a b c and we right. apply f g a b c <laughs> um so I, I i take that for for holy ghost consideration no that, that definitely makes sense thank you so much okay um as long if you don't have anything else i'm gonna move on to verse 11 all right Uh, Verse 11 says, then Jesus said, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, if you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. Mm. Okay. Now, Julius Caesar was king at the time, right? Okay, good. Because I, I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. Um, 
In verses 14, uh, the question I have for you, Brother John, is why did the plaintiff say, um, here's your king? And does he believe that Jesus is the king? Hmm, that's a great question. Let's see. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. Like, is he saying that in a mocking way or does he? I'm I read... always, go ahead. Yeah, when I read it last night, I'm like, uh, I've never mentioned, I've never seen him mention that Jesus mm -hmm. was king or, and then earlier it was mentioned, but as a mock, so I was kind of confused. Is he believe it? Is he just saying it? Is it like some type of meaning behind it? Mm -hmm. I, I was kind of confused with that. It's honestly, I, I I still feel going with the overall picture of scripture as a whole. I think it's like we were uh, talking about a little while ago, the, the encounter, but not the application. I still feel that him saying, Hey, look, here's your King is still more so from a mocking standpoint. Sure. Um, he, he hears Jesus' perspective as far as his conversation with him, with who he says he is. He just doesn't believe it. Um, and he just proclaimed it to the people. And in a way, it's, it's interesting now, too. Like I said, politics plays such a big game. It's like you're rallying the people up. You know these people are already upset right. and want to kill Jesus. And here you are saying, here's your king. This is not my king. This is not <laughs> who I submit to. Um, but I definitely feel that it wasn't him making the confession. Um, he, was, he was just making the statement. He was still mocking uh, for sure. Let me be Pentecostal though. Let me throw in here though. Verse 11. I, this is my Jesus talking, man. This is my uh -huh. Jesus talking. He said, you will have no power over me at all unless it would give it to you from above. I told you it was above me now. So the one yeah. who handed me over to you has the greatest sin. And it really, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm probably just a weird Christian sometimes. I, I say Jesus is the OG of OGs. Um, he, he was he was gangster. I don't know. <laughs> he was gangster. Jesus had a way of just saying certain things that put you in your place and your perspective. And he walked with such. It was just so cool to me. I don't know. I don't know. The lens I see the Lord, it is with such reverence, but it's also with such coolness. Mm -hmm. um, not to kind of water down anything, but Jesus walked such a real walk. Maybe that's the word. Such mm -hmm. a real walk. Um. And he's letting them know it's like, hey, you, you're beating me, you're, you know, you're spitting at me, you're you're ready to crucify me, and you still don't have power over me. Mm. And the only reason why you're able to do these things is because my father is allowing you to. Mm. If my father wanted to step in and turn this over, he could. And guess what? He has the power to do so. So if you're able to do this to me, it's only because the father is allowing it. But realize mm. this. At the end of the day, my father will get the glory. At the end of the day, my father will be exalted. At the end of the day, he will, be, will still be God. He will still be the father above all things. And um, yeah. I, I, I respect Jesus for that. I mean, you know, everyone has their reason they love the Lord. I, I love him for that, uh, just with that. Um, but still going even with the context of the scripture, it's still just going back to back. Um, mm -hmm. And I always say to the, I mean, the Lord works, the word of God, not like I'm about the tangent, the word of God, we got to remember is so relevant. Um, Cause even as you read this chapter, look at what's going on today. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's such a clash between, or such a siding between what we want with the government to do or what the church wants to do and what we want. This is the righteous one. That's the unrighteous one. These mm -hmm. scriptures are right. These Christians are wrong. And it's really going down at the end of the day. What is the father saying? What is the father doing? What is the will of the father in the midst of the time that we're in? What is the will of the father for what's going to happen after this? Um, sometimes, you know, and I encourage you guys, even, you know, in your young adultness, I'm going to say, you're not kids, not at all. Um, but as your eyes are open naturally, have them open spiritually as well. These things, where is God in this? And where is the Lord in this? How can he move in this and through this and realize mm -hmm. there's a higher power at work? Um, okay. Regardless of what side of the spectrum that you lie on, that, that's, that's my favorite line with that as far as it comes to the politics right now, honestly, is it's above us. I mean, at the end of the day, God is still in control. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who is at whatever office helm. It, they don't have ultimate power. Or um, as I like to say, the power is limited. Uh, mm. with that. 
Um, but even just bringing it back even further into the scripture again, Pilate just sat down. Pilate was conflicted. I feel when you look at verse uh, 12 and 13, you're talking about when Pilate tried to release him, then Pilate, excuse me, tried to release him. But the Jewish leaders shouted, if you release this man, you're no friend of Caesar. People love to throw names and mm. relationship. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. Uh, when they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement in Hebrew, uh, Gabbatha. Uh, it was now, well, well, verse 14, it was now about noon, the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, look, here's your king, when he mocks him again. He's pretty much throwing back in Pilate's face. You have an alliance. Uh, we mm -hmm. have an alliance. And how often we do that? We have an alliance. We have a friendship, but we know the truth. Um, mm -hmm. just for application sake, but um, scripture sake for what it is, they were just mad. They they just wanted to be righteous. You gotta remember too historically, um, these particular leaders within the Jewish faith, to them that was the bread and the butter. That was it. You don't come against my faith. It's like um, oh man, what's a good uh comparison? An old uh, older. Heavily involved church person. Yes. But I was actually going to go do pop culture. I was about to be like, that's like a whole Tupac versus Biggie thing. <laughs> um, but you're right. <laughs> that's like an older church person. Um, forgive me, Cole Grab. I know this is on the internet. Somebody's going to find this and cut me up. <laughs> like, this is for those. We need to stick to the blue book. We need to stick well, to the this, brown book. This is on my channel. So they got to come to you. They got to come for me too. Oh, come for me. Yeah, hey, come, come for me. <laughs> I'll, yeah, put, my, I'll put my address in the comments, <laughs> brother. John about that life. <laughs> this is gonna be by. This is gonna be above. It's me. above me now. According, it's above me now. It's above it's me above according me to my now. father. But it's 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 so interesting. Human nature, um, even in of itself, too. Human nature is amazing. I'm fascinated, um, about the nature of the human heart, um. Again, it's, it's for me overall with this scripture, even though I know it leads to purpose, it just shows how close we can be to God, but so far at the same time. Mm. These people are right there with the Lord. And it's not like you really, the only accusation you can have against this man is that he's breaking your religious tradition for the good of man to the pointing of the same God that they say they serve. It's not a matter of the Lord was exalting another God. God, Jesus never came to say someone else was God. He was right there to say, hey, this is the fulfillment of the scriptures that the Father has mm -hmm. given us from the beginning of time. This is the now season of fulfillment. But yet still, they wanted to stay in what we had, what we know. And they were just blind. They're just blind in the midst of light. Uh, they just had blinders on. It was, it's, And that amazes me. And it keeps me to a place of, uh, in prayer personally, it's like, Lord, let me please, please. Let me not get to the place that I am in your presence, that I'm in the place that you're moving, but I'm blinded by what I, I, I'm stuck to see. I'm right. blinded by what I, I know and not really hearing what you're doing or what you're moving. I don't want to be in the place, Lord, that I'm chasing promise and not realizing that promise is right here with me. The Messiah was always promised. Mm -hmm. He was Jesus was always prophesied, even for the beginning of time. And the thing is this too, looking in the fullness of scripture, there's nothing done in the word itself that does not speak towards Jesus. Jesus mm -hmm. might have only been manifested in the flesh after his birth, but Jesus was always existed. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. And the only thing that we see now in the fulfillment of the word in the New Testament, as John 1 and 14 says, is the word became flesh, but the mm -hmm. word was always there jesus yes. was always in existence with the father praise god he was always there and yes. we just got to be able to say lord let me be able to see you and, mm -hmm. and 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 that's that's probably the biggest thing that always jars me when it comes to this part of the gospels is that you had jesus i mean look mm -hmm. at how hard it is now for us sometimes you know we're trying to proclaim to our friends and family or even strangers about the love of god and right. sometimes you think about it it's like y'all had jesus it's not like mm -hmm. you hear us trying to preach and you know we got to trust in the holy spirit to preach and we got to sweat y'all close out and we got to try different ways to give me the message and different channels you had god 
but the thing is just to make sure you all right. I was trying to think. No, no, no. You <laughs> said we had to sweat, and since I got the mic in front of me, oh. I'm going. To the mic I was really confused. I was really confused. Because <laughs> you know, I got the mic now, so I can act you like, I, like, I you can was act like I'm doing. Boy, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I thought something came on your face. Oh, my God. <laughs> you okay? That's right. See, you guys sweat. You right, though. And that's how it is. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I, I thank God for his sovereignty at the end of the day. I think uh, everything has a purpose, even looking at the scripture, the way that we're going through it, even if it's for some might seem like on the surface, it's just still giving us something to help us live today. It's giving us something to live with that above. Cause, hey, we don't know when the Lord's coming. There might be a, a 2021, I mean, excuse me, a 3021. And in mm-hmm. 3021, they're still going to need this word. They're still going to need this word to explain and go through to show, hey, God is still the God of humanity as it go through. And politics mm-hmm. is not new. Um, what we see now, uh, and I know we, I ain't going to hold that deep into opinion on this because I'm going to just let people have their own opinion with that. Uh, but they say history repeats itself and history mm-hmm. goes in cycles. And even as history goes in the cycles, God is unchanging. God is unchanging, so oh. I, I stopped with that. Look, here is your king, and they 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 still kept their alliance. But um, my alliance, of course, you know, if us to apply is our alliance is to the, to the Lord, uh, yeah. our alliance is to the Father, uh, and they go from there. But remember too, actually, and I'm not going to dig into it because um, it's jumping out to me now. Um, but I can't remember in my historical context. Normally, Nate, we bounce off each other, but he's not here today, Nate. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, but verse 14, even you got to look at the timing too. Here's even what's going into the historical factor of the scripture and even the cultural. Uh, verse 14, remember when all this was going on, um, going on, as it says, it says, it was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. So they were really trying to get this thing done so they can actually celebrate uh, yeah. Passover. And of course, Passover is a very important feast. Um, and it's funny now. I'm about to rant, but I'm a, I'm gonna I'm try not to. You know, you want to kill this man and then go celebrate the Lord. Let me mm. makes no sense whatsoever. It don't make no make no we, sense. We are gonna kill Josh before his birthday, but on his birthday we are gonna celebrate. That's cool. That don't make no sense. Oh Lord. I mean that's that's probably a study in and of itself, but I think so. <laughs> I think so. Is and that that part of uh, that part uh, amazes me. We got to be careful. And like I said, the main thing for us in our application is we have to be careful uh, mm-hmm. to not get so caught up in our religiosity that we lose our relationship with God, mm-hmm. and and just get so caught up in um, the celebrations of church. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what I always have to say, at least for Christians, uh, is it's a season of encountering the Christ. Uh, don't forsake the church. Do not forsake worship. That's to forsake that is actually unbiblical. But don't be so caught up in trying to do your Sunday morning <laughs> that you miss God. Uh, right. that you 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 know that that. Yes, I'm a I'm a simmer myself down. But it's amazing. You look at the history and the timing. Uh, even with this, they want this man crucified. One. Which is, and I'll, 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 I'll stop and let you guys jump in if you have any questions, which is amazing to me because remember, um, but um, what I'm saying, so it's, so Jesus saying the son of God and they were upset and they were ready to, to crucify him, but they really had no, the funny thing is even you guys have to look at the two, um, this really could have been a matter that stayed within the church, um, but because the church couldn't find the, the judgment that they wanted, they had to take it to the government. They had to take it out, um, which man, I'm just. Write this stuff down. We're going to have to like have some kind of study or something down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had to take this outside. And the funny thing is, it even speaks to the governments, even of the spirit. You can't take uh, a spiritual thing and expect the natural government to rule on mm-hmm. it. Um, and, and the funny thing, too, even as we talked about a little while ago, you're, you're speaking of Jesus saying he's the son of God. And the thing is, you want to crucify him without really no evidence. And now you're in the place that uh, you're going to your natural government and your natural government is telling you, I find no fault. 
but mm-hmm. you still want to go ahead and crucify this God, uh, excuse me, this man who is God. Of course, we had the revelation, but they didn't at the time. You want to kill this man and you want to do it before you honor the God that you worship, who is also the God that says he sent him. Mm. It, it boggles my mind. It, I'm a hush. <laughs> Mind-boggling, rightfully so. But I really love what you said. Um, It's funny because we had also touched on that last week, like being so caught up, specifically in modern-day church settings, but being so caught up in, you know, uh, how this service runs, you know, this is here, this is here, this is here, and kind of missing God. And it's it's kind of scary to think about. But it also kind of reminds me of, like, when I – when I would read scriptures and hear about the Pharisees, you know, how they have like all the respect for their religious system and they're missing, they're missing God working right in front of them. Um, And that should really, I really think that's an important prayer. That's something important that we should be praying, you know, Lord, don't ever let me get so caught up in, you know, the minute by minute of Sunday morning that I end up missing what it is that you want to do. Um, With brother Nate last week, we were also talking about it as far as like in a worship setting, um, in a musical worship setting, I, I always like to clarify that because worship doesn't necessarily mean singing. But um, we were talking about like how how important it is to when you are worship leading and stuff like that to make sure that you're in tuned with the Holy Spirit more than in tune with the Holy Spirit. Also operating in obedience, making sure you know the vision of the church, stuff like that. All these things play a part. But I was kind of telling him like an experience I had in church um in how worship was was like 10 minutes um something like that but the people were really being positively affected like the holy spirit was moving in the room but because it had hit that time mark it was all right cut music's off we're moving to the next part of the service and that really hurt my heart it honestly did because I was like, you know, obviously the Lord can do it in that amount of time. But if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you'll know when he wants to extend. You'll know when he wants to cut down. Right. Um, we, so that's all that to say we shouldn't be doing things like we say on our own strength or with our own mind. Uh, we should really be trying to see what the Lord is saying regarding these things. So that's definitely something I'm going to be praying for my personal life. Lord, don't ever let me get so caught up in this and this and this that i end up missing you because that would just be it'd be a shame it'd be a shame but ezra do you have anything to add uh before we yes. kind of close out I, I have a question for brother john so if a member or somebody that has to go to the church breaks the church tradition how should the church react um that's a good question that's a good question. And actually, I thought of a point too that I mentioned. Actually, bear with me. Let me make sure I write this down. I'll type it someplace. Mm-hmm. Um, come on, make sure at least I give this point for good context uh, overall. All right. So I answered the question. So if someone is breaking out of tradition in the church, how should the church react? I think the church should be in prayer. I mean, I think a lot of times um, the word, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, you try the spirit by the spirit. And I think sometimes we 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 see new things on the surface and not really the spirit behind it. Um, the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is consistent. I realize, um, and we got to remember that He is consistent, uh, always in what He is inspiring to do. Um, and what I mean by that is He's always going to inspire God's children to do things that exalt Jesus at the end of the day. Um, and it's, it's really seeing the father's heart within the context of the matter. Um, and I think about it and it's funny. I always think about it cause I always hear, um, uh, I'm gonna sound like Ezra. I'm gonna say the elders I always hear elders talk about, we don't sing this anymore. We don't do that anymore. What happened to this power that we used to see, uh, what happened when, you know, people used to come to prayer meeting and whatever it may be. Um, but it all comes down to. What's the spirit that we allowed in uh, that, that took our focus? We allowed ourselves to be distracted or when we saw the new thing happen, um, it brought the vision. It really the goals were so uh, bringing it all together. But well, what should the church should do? The church should pray. The church should pray. The church should seek the Lord. They should seek the Holy Spirit for what it is and not be too quick to knock down. Um, God always, he always moving. He's always moving. We, we can't put God into a place that he's stagnant. And only moves in one way, uh, mm-hmm. but we have to be able to have all things, even with 
uh, nowadays. Nowadays, things now move more into a prophetic realm. We, we hear a lot of people want to prophesy, things like that. Right. We, we have to be able to have a relationship with Holy Spirit to discern. Discernment is a, a great practice uh, that goes with it. One thing I will say, at least for personal opinion, when we think about um, bringing something new in, uh, I think a lot of it is I think a lot of things come back to the matter of our personal relationship with the Lord. Um, and I say that because too often, like I said uh, before, we, we limit God. We limit God by how he can move. And unfortunately, we limit Holy Spirit by how he can move. And that's not what we should do. Um, shoot. And I say, look at Jesus. Jesus is my OG. He spat in mud. This man healed someone's eyes by spitting in mud. Um mm-hmm. Even the God of creation as a whole. This is the God that had a prophet lay on a dead boy and breathe into him. And the little boy sneezed and he came back to life. That's not, that's not common. God is not a common type of God. This is the God we serve that he had a, a servant raise a rod and a sea parted. I mean... Can we really say that God will not move in a different way than what we're maybe familiar with? Um, and I think sometimes, like I said, it all comes down to relationship. We we limit God to only moving by strict laying of hands, or we we don't we feel that God can only move by singing this type of song or that type of song. We got to be able to open our eyes to the greatness and the vastness of God. God is bigger than what we say He is. Um, and like I said, even with this last 45 seconds, you look in the word for some, find something in the word that is traditional in the way that God moved, I guess I can say. Um, and you can't, you really can't say the really only tradition that God has done is not keeping the tradition. God moved in what was needed in that hour. And that's something we have to remember as Christians. God has to be allowed to move, God bless you, in the way that he is needed in that hour. God needed to move with, by plagues. He needed to move by changing water into wine. He needed to move by allowing Jesus to spit in mud, raised from the dead, or having a leper touch the water, things like that. And the thing is really now, Holy Spirit, what do we need now? And we don't want to miss what God is doing now. Not saying, you know, and like I said, test everything about the Spirit, because some of these things people be doing are some straight, straight, some straight foolishness. Right. Uh, you know, let's be real. Some of it is really just mysticism and witchcraft and that's for a whole different day Mm -hmm. Uh, but when somebody brings something new or a new method pray father can i find you in this coming back and bringing it back to the answer and application father can i find you in this where's your heart in this can i align with this does this align with your word once it passed through those filters go with it go with it or give it a chance there's a um Matter of fact, there's even, oh man, I can't give the direct chapter and verse, but I know what's in the book of Acts. Um, and it was talking about, you know, when they have different servants going around ministering and, you know, the, the council came back, it came back to the apostles. And they were like, well, what do we do about this movement? And they said, just let them go. I mean, it will fall. One thing I, I love about the Lord and I love about the kingdom um, and even perhaps the unkingdom is, it, they can both move. The wheat and tail will grow together. But guess what? The truth of who God is and what God is doing will outshine the counterfeit. Truth will always outshine. So regardless of what people try to bring in the church, if it not be God, it will fall. And mm-hmm. the, the thing is just a matter of being able to learn of God, speak the truth, and continue to teach truth. And people will always receive the revelation. And though I want to touch on too about with the verse with the Passover too, is um and bringing it in uh even with the question uh because i remember jesus actually uh, in some terms is called the passover lamb remember passover um you know they used to sprinkle blood on the door and mm-hmm. we got to remember you know the, the, the told me that when they came um you know the evil the angel of death all these things would pass over your home um as you know because the house was covered by the blood and what people didn't realize in the scripture here that we realize, um, they wanted to kill Jesus before the Passover, which really was in a way good timing too. Look how the sovereignty and the divinity of God. So in essence, they wanted to kill their lamb. They wanted the blood of the lamb, not realizing they want to slaughter the lamb. And in the midst of them wanting to be angry at Jesus, 
they're not realizing that his blood is what actually atoned for them. His blood is what actually was being shed for them, brought them in a place that they can be forgiven. And so I want to point that out too. Um, in the midst of all these things, you know, because, um, you know, you look into the Passover history, there's so many different things you had to do. You had to hit the right lamb, go to the right priest for the right offering, things like that. Jesus was the Passover lamb um, as well. So they, they didn't realize you're trying to kill your lamb, but um, praise God, the lamb went to be slaughtered anyway, and his blood still shed, and the blood still redeems, and the blood still heals um, today. Amen. So you... That's that's an amazing part because I never thought of it like that. Because with the Passover, they did the sacrifice, put the blood over the door, and Jesus was the blood. He was the Lamb. He was killed so that everybody could be saved and protected. See, God, 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 be I'll be telling you, out. like, and he know what he be doing. He know what he's doing. They didn't know, but he he know what he was doing. And that's yeah. why. And sometimes you ask the question of um, why can Jesus be so quiet in situations like this? He trusted his father. He knew his father knew what he was doing. He knew his father had a plan in the midst of all things. And sometimes we just got to be quiet and follow the plan. But mm-hmm. yeah, Jesus was the Passover lamb. Oh, and he shed his blood. Well, today we had a brother Nate sermon, my brother John. Thank God for that. <laughs> Uh, no, the reason why I said Brother Nate family because you remember for the oh, last Brother two Nate. weeks, Brother yeah. Nate he just went off. He went off with 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 his word, and since he wasn't here today, Brother John was able to do that uh, for us to be able to. We educate. had the, we had the season in the, in the building. Yes, we had the season in the building because the salt and pepper in it. I got the jerk season today for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming along with another Bible study. Now we'll be doing the closing prayer done by the seasoning, drugs seasoning, uh, Brother John. Oh, okay. Okay. Jerk seasoning praying today. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you uh, once again for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just this time to just look at your word. Pray that, Lord, we're able to um, see things in a way that you have continued to illuminate your word to us. I pray, God, uh, that as we leave this time and those that may be watching this video, uh, leave this particular uh, video. I pray that they've been blessed. I pray, God, that we would look to you. Help us to touch you, Holy Spirit. Help us, uh, Father, to walk in the way that pleases you. I pray, Lord God, that we don't crucify you with our religiosity. Let it not be possible that we get to the place that we are, we're near you, but not in you. Let us t- not uh, have you in our encounters, but don't apply you. I pray, Lord, today that we'll continue to just look to you. Give us inspiration. Help us to walk this walk daily as we look to you. We give you thanks and praise and glory and honor for this ministry, this, this, this platform. Let it continue to reach out to those in this generation and generations beyond. Let it go, oh God, higher and above all that you have had it to go before and reach new hearts. And I pray, Lord, that as people watch these videos and even watch this video, let us let us fall in love with you again. Help us, Holy Spirit, to fall in love with Jesus again. Uh, in the midst of all things, we honor the Father and we live in the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming along on another episode of Bible Study. This is episode 41. I hope you guys got out. Uh, the word today. I hope you guys continue to strive to learn more about the God. Continue to work in yourself. Continue to grow closer to Him. Just continue to focus on the necessary things. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notification, and this is motivation for young Christians. I'll see you guys next week in another episode of Bible Study. <laughs>